Yo, what is up everybody? It's Riley's Red Zone here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving grades for a lot of free agency signings. I'm recording this on Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. It is the league start day, officially. I'm recording it at about 2 Eastern time, so the one of the most recent signings was AJ Green to the Cardinals. So I will be talking about pretty much every signing before that. Um, and then any signing that's made during the recording of this video or after we'll get another video that will go in the next one. So in this video, I will be grading a ton of free agents. I'm going to go position by position so far and see where the players signed and give them grades for how good of a value is it. Do I like the team fit? So I will be making more of these as more free agents start. But this is basically going to be the recap of all, all the signings that happened before the league year, after the start of the legal tampering period. So the next, the past few days um, is what's going to be included in this video. So let's get right into it. We're going to start by looking at the quarterbacks. So first, let's talk about the quarterbacks. We have a lot of moving pieces in the puzzle here for the NFL quarterback landscape. We have some starters moving around, some backups moving around, uh, mostly, to be honest, starter level players, not really any of the uh, prototypical backups really so far. So let's start with Ryan Fitzpatrick. I did predict him to go to the football team in my last video. It did end up happening. This is an unbelievable value for $10 million to get your starting quarterback. I'm going to give that one an A. I really like that for Washington. I did like Alex Smith, but if you did cut Alex Smith, which they did, that was your best option available to me because I think that although Winston, I have higher on my rankings for available free agents, the better fit for Washington is they need a veteran who just can get it done right now. And that's what Fitzpatrick was. So... I give that one an A. That's a really good signing. Keeps him in contention, you know, to maybe make the playoffs again this year. Really good signing. Jameis Winston, as I just said, was maybe my best quarterback on the board. $12 million is a really good value. Uh, it's going to be between him and Taysom Hill for the starting quarterback spot. I think that it ended up being the best fit for both sides. It sounds like maybe the Bears tried to get in there as well. But to me, it makes sense. Jameis can compete for a starting spot in a really good offense with a really good head coach. And the Saints can get a possible starting quarterback for relatively cheap. So I give that one an A as well. Now, Andy Dalton to the Bears is not Andy Dalton that I dislike about this contract. It's the route the Bears took. To me, they should have went, I mean, all the way in to Russell Wilson, put all their chips in. Uh, but to me, it seems like they kind of put a little bit in everything. If they really did make an offer for Winston, they had some in that camp. Obviously, they signed Dalton so that we know they had some communication there. And then it was revealed today they possibly made a pretty big offer to the Seahawks. I think that... Um, it also is interesting that they still have foals. This means they won't bring back Trubisky, but then you're, you're going to have exactly what you had last year, competition between Dalton and Foles, you know, instead of Trubisky. So uh, I really think they got stuck in the middle. They don't have great gra draft capital. Um, they really still could pick a rookie to me, but... Um, they're just not in a good spot quarterback-wise, to be honest. I think that this year will be kind of a one-year rental restart. And then next year, though, maybe if they have a top 10 pick, they can get a quarterback. Um, because otherwise, they're kind of just going to be stuck here in the middle. So, I gave it an above-average signing because I respect them for going out and getting somebody better than Nick Foles. But it's not the best they could have done. So, when I'm giving these grades, it's not only a grade based on the player the amount, the team fit. It can also be maybe what approach did the team take? Could they have done something else? Tyrod Taylor to Houston. I did say in my predictions video that a, a quarterback, if you're a backup, that like these bottom three names. I talked about it with Andy Dalton, but these bottom three names here are all guys who have been started before their starter caliber, you know, on the low end, but they've been backups. And I said that one of them should go to Houston because if Deshaun Watson is traded, you're in a prime spot to actually get some playing time. So Tyrod Taylor does the smart thing, does that. Um, I think that was a really good move. Now, the $12.5 mil $12 million, though, is quite a lot, especially the thing is, too, 
if you're the Texans, if you are 100% confident Deshaun Watson's coming back, you would not give this much to a backup quarterback. So I do think that this was a really good move for Tyrod, but for Houston, I think it was a little bit too much money compared, like, literally he's the highest contract on this page, and I would take any of the other four over Tyrod Taylor. Not saying Tyrod is bad at all, but it's a little bit of an overpay, but I think it's good for Houston that they did actually sign a quarterback. So I gave it a C, it's average. In this whole video, a C is average. Jacoby Brissett, though, great job. If you knew Fitzpatrick was going to be gone, Get somebody that is a start of quality. We've seen to a struggle before. $7.5 million is really good, especially compared to some of these other contracts. He can come in there and play if Tua is struggling like Fitzpatrick did last year. I absolutely love this signing for the Dolphins. I'm shocked, honestly, that Brissett did not go somewhere else to maybe have a chance at starting. So I would give this one an A. So I think that very interesting quarterback market this year still a lot available but it's going to be more on the backup side if you needed the starting quarterback your window is gone now let's look at the running backs the one signing that has not had a number on it yet so i didn't give it a grade is malcolm brown to the dolphins i think that's a decent signing but there's no number so i can't really grade it uh, but let's look at the done deals jamal williams i definitely thought that jamal was going to get paid like a starter this year in free agency, I knew he was probably going to leave after they extended Aaron Jones because they already have A.J. Dillon there as well. So it made sense for him to go elsewhere. I'm shocked that Detroit, of all places, was the team to give him a good offer because um, they already have some players there. Now, I will say Jamal Williams does offer a little bit different of a component. So I think that it's a decent signing for, this is what I'll say, Jamal Williams like for this amount is an A signing. I would have given an A. So that's what kind of brings this up to a higher grade is Jamal Williams himself. But the fit, uh, I'm shocked that Detroit did this. This probably means they're going to look to move on from carry on Johnson. Um, otherwise, they're kind of just carrying three decent running backs around because they still have DeAndre Swift. Uh, they're probably going to, Adrian Peterson's going to go somewhere uh, to a contender. So I like this signing. It's more so the fit here that brings it down versus the player. The player's an A signing for this amount, but the fit is very interesting. I don't think he's going to be super involved, even though he is a great running back. Carlos Hyde, he actually did play for the Jaguars a few years ago, but more so now it's the Urban Meyer connection from Ohio State. Two years, six mil is pretty good money. He has improved probably since the last time he was in Jacksonville. He had a pretty decent season last year for Seattle when some of the other running backs were hurt. So he's pretty good at this stage in the career. The contract is okay. That's why I gave it a B-. minus. It shows their faith in James Robinson, and I agree with that. James Robinson can be your future running back, especially since you barely have to pay him you know, for a little bit. So uh, I think this was a pretty good move. I'm going to give that one a B-. minus. Same with Devontae Booker. This one I'm honestly shocked. Uh, the Giants had some options, you know, maybe to bring back at running back between Wayne Gallman, Alfred Morris. Uh, they had some options there, but instead they go Devontae Booker. They go out of house to go get a backup running back for Saquon. You definitely needed to get something after, unfortunately. Saquon is unbelievable, but he's had some injury concerns, so I like this contract. I personally think it's almost a better value than the two-year six mil uh, of Hyde, but they're about the same here. I'd put them relatively about the same level. Um, and once again, it's interesting that um, they chose to get Booker over who they already had. So I'd give that one a B- minus as well. Not much running back movement yet. Still a lot of great names on the board. We have Kenyon Drake. Chris Carson and Todd Gurley among some other ones so still a lot of movement to go in the running backs wide receivers lots of movement so far so let's really take a dive into this position uh, also I gotta say a lot of players still available Kenny Galladay obviously up there the number one receiver uh, still on the board but let's look at who's been signed so far Corey Davis signed with the New York Jets last year really was his first good year 
got picked very high in the draft, but to be honest, did not do very much until this past year, but then he performed well. Um, the value of individual years here for the Jets is very good. That's why it is as a B plus. I will say though, I don't think he will be a great number one receiver. He was the number two in Tennessee behind AJ Brown. That's why it's not an A signing is I think the way they've kind of done this is that he's going to be their number one receiver. Um, unless maybe they pick, they wouldn't necessarily pick a receiver at two, um, but maybe if they traded down, they could, but, uh, I don't like that aspect of it, but the value itself is pretty good, so I give that one a B plus. Marvin Jones, unbelievable signing for the Jaguars. I've got to be honest here, they messed up a lot of other signings, but this is one they did not, this is an A signing, almost an A plus, um, unbelievable. I think this is a great signing for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He'll go in there opposite DJ Chark, and he'll light it up. So I think this is a great signing for the Jags. Nelson Aguilar, I think I had rated higher a little bit than other people. I thought he would actually get a decent contract. I didn't expect him to get one day one, though, and he gets it from the Patriots. A little bit of an overpay, in my opinion. When you can get Marvin Jones for, you know, a little over $7 million a season, uh, and then you're paying Aguilar 11 that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, so I give it a C plus. I think he has developed. Uh, once again, though, you know, Edelman's a slot guy, so you're kind of wanting Aguilar to, you know, be the outside, because Nikhil Harry is not um, your number one yet, so as of right now, Aguilar would be your number one receiver, and I don't love that, so I'm going to give that one a C plus. Kendrick Bourne is a B plus. That's a little better value, five mil a year. Uh, I'm personally not a huge Kendrick Bourne fan, but for this value, that's pretty good. Same thing though. I, he maybe he's he has a better chance of being your number two than maybe Aguilar being your number one. So I think that this is the better signing out of those two. So I give this one a B plus, pretty good on the Bourne signing, but I don't love the Aguilar signing. Emmanuel Sanders almost gave an A. I gave it a B plus. I think that when the Bills cut John Brown, we kind of assumed their receiver room would stay put. You know, they have um, Stefan Diggs, obviously, and then we thought that Gabriel Davis would maybe take a step up with Cole Beasley uh, to be that starting because he he played very well last year. So I thought they could leave it there. They don't have to sign a veteran. You know, they can save cap space. But then they get Emmanuel Sanders, who I think still can play pretty well. Um, decent value, six mil a year. That's pretty good. So I give it a B plus. He's not what he used to be. But I think that Buffalo's trying to make a Super Bowl run, and because of that reason, I'll give him a little bit of leverage there. I'll give it a B plus. Now, AJ Green to the Cardinals. This one's a tough one. This just happened. Um, I'm going to give it an A minus. I think they're, once again, they're trying to make a push this year, almost like Tampa did last year, you know, going out and getting J.J. Watt. They got Hopkins last year, now signing A.J. Green. They have a lot of great pieces there. Uh, 8 mil is relatively, I'd say that's pretty accurate, you know, a little more than Marvin Jones. I think that's around what A.J. Green could be right now, a little better than Marvin Jones. That's They're around the same level, so I would give that one an A-. minus. Once again, I, I'll give them a little leverage for trying to make something happen this year. But then you look at John Brown at one year, 3.75. That might be one of my favorite free agency signings. We know the Raiders love speed. Uh, he's not going to be a number one receiver for you, but he can go out there and play very well. And for $3.75 million, that is an absolute steal. Um, almost an A+. plus. That is a great signing for the Las Vegas Raiders. Jamal Agnew, though, might be my least favorite signing, possibly in all of free agency. The number here is a little less than originally reported. Um, but Jamal Agnew just moved to receiver last year for the Detroit Lions. Uh, he's, he's pretty good at kick returning, I guess, but not much experience in the actual pass game. And so you're basically telling me that you're going to pay old, like almost 5 mil a year? to for a kick returner and try to make him play wide receiver I don't really like this signing almost gave it an F so I'm gonna give that one a D minus similar story here for Andre Roberts to the Texans um, below average for me I think Andre Roberts does offer a little bit more maybe in the return game because you know he's up there 
uh, still as one of the best returners. So I think it's a little bit of better uh, value. But the Houston Texans, we'll talk about throughout this whole video, I have no clue what they are doing in free agency they're they're instead of going out and getting big players it's clear they're not they don't know what they're doing they're signing a bunch of guys you know with new england experience and maybe around the two three four million dollar range and that's just not gonna work to me for this year um so i don't love that signing i'm gonna give it a c minus below average now this john ross signing i almost gave an a a little too expensive to give it an a but i love this move from the giants is has he been good th recently no, but why not take a flyer on the fastest dude in NFL history at the Combine uh, for 2.25 mil? I think it's a really good move from the Giants. I respect them for making a bold move, uh, so I, I reward them for that. That's a B plus. Chris Moore, as I just said, is just a one-year, two-mil uh, connection to the head coach uh, because he came from Baltimore. That's about it. He's a special teamer, I'd say. Um, just very interesting sign. It's just kind of there, so I'm going to give that one a C. So a lot of movement so far in the wide receivers, but still some pretty big names on the table. Obviously, Kenny Galladay. Also, you want to look at Will Fuller. It, there's just a lot of young players, even T.Y. Hilton as well on the veteran side. There is a ton of talent available, so we will have to see what happens there. Now, the tight end position. Okay, so before I even talk about the Patriots, let, let's explain why these are the grades they are. Okay, so I was literally on Monday, right? I hear that John U. Smith signed with the Patriots. I think that's a pretty good fit. You know, I, I would have given it a B plus. I think it's very good on the higher side, but I do think John U. Smith might be a top five tight end in football right now. I was shocked that Hunter Henry didn't get signed first. Okay, so I like that. Then I'm literally in the middle of the day on Tuesday, and somebody tells me that Hunter Henry signed with the Patriots as well, and I'm thinking, what are they doing? It's an unbelievable value, but when you just pick two tight ends in the third round last year, there's no way. You might keep four on your roster, maybe, um, but then you're gonna, you know, have to try to trade them or something. I didn't love those picks last year when they were made, and it's clear that um, the front office doesn't value those third-round picks either. So um, I would give the Hunter Henry contract by itself an A. If they would have signed Hunter Henry first, I'd give it an A. But it's getting Jonu Smith and then doing it as well. I'll give it a B plus. I'm shocked that Hunter Henry chose to do this. They're being paid the same amount per year. Um, watch out for two tight end sets, I guess, in New England. Maybe even three because they, you know, once again, they're just saying the rookies from last year can just get out of town because, you know, you're going to run with these two. So that is just a weird situation. So I'm, I think it balances out to a B plus for both. But Maybe they're towards A, but together I think you kind of get a B plus. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just very weird to me. Gronk, I just gave an A. It's whatever you had to do to bring him back. Just do it. Uh, it's really that simple. Chris Manhurts, I'm not a huge fan of, to be honest. This is a, a little overpay to me. He might be the starting tight end. Their other one is Josh Oliver, who they picked pretty high a few years ago, but not many people like that pick. Because he hasn't really done much, and I don't want Chris Manhurts being my starting tight end for a lot of money, so I give that one a below average. I, you know, respect them going out and trying to get a tight end, um, you know, but they cut tight, they declined the option on Tyler Eifert, so to me, they've downgraded quite significantly. So don't love that one. And Pharaoh Brown, once again, is just trying to keep some players there for relatively cheap. It's just a middle of the road signing depth piece so the tight end market you know your top ones are gone jared cook's still up there though i mean we've got some interesting ones still available but the patriots tight end thing was just very interesting this year let's look at offensive tackle trent williams getting the bag out here literally being the highest paid offensive lineman in history highest offensive tackle this is a massive contract, but they had to do what they had to do. The only reason this is not an A is I think the years are a little bit high here. He's going to be 39, I believe, when this contract's up. That is 
pretty old for an offensive tackle. And also, I mean, depending on how they structure it, but, like, if you're paying this dude, you know, over $23 million when he's 39, I don't know if that's going to work out for you. But I respect them for, you know, keeping him there. He was perhaps a top, I'd say for most people, top five free agent. Um, so he was maybe even the best tackle in football last year, so I do respect that. Uh, I loved that trade when they made it. And it paid off almost in a signing, just maybe a little too long in the year. But I, I think he deserves to be the highest paid offensive tackle. Matt Filer, let me say this. For value purposes, this might be one of the best free agent signings. But the problem is the fit here. Um, he's a right tackle, I'd say, primarily. And they have Brian Bulaga. So if they decide to maybe get rid of Brian Bulaga, who they just signed last year, you know, that wasn't a very good signing then. And at left, they have Trey Pipkins right now. I think Filer, even at left, could be better. But you don't want to have to make him switch. So the value is unbelievable. But I don't know what their plan is going to be. If they're going to literally just have him as a backup. If they're going to move him to guard. If they're going to move Bulaga to left tackle. If they're going to move him to left tackle. I don't know what the plan is. But the value is unbelievable there. Cameron Irving, though, on the other hand. I disagree with that. Um... They already have some pretty good tackles there. You know, Greg Little has not been unbelievable at left tackle, but the t Taylor Moten, uh, they gave the franchise tag at right tackle. He's been very good. And Cam Irving, that's quite a bit of money to be a backup tackle. So I'm going to give it a below average on that one, a little bit of an overpay on that one. Kendall Lamb, on the other hand, though, is he a great right tackle? No. But at the moment, he'd be Tennessee's starting right tackle. They cut Dennis Kelly, so... He, for starting right tackle, that's pretty good value. So I'm going to give that one a B+. Plus. Not an unbelievable player, but for the value, it's pretty good. Jermaine Ofedi can play tackle and guard, so you can consider him a guard here if you want. Just a middle of the road. I don't think he's a very high ceiling anymore. He was a former high pick, but um, just kind of there for five mil. It's a little bit of an overpay, but you had to get it done to keep your old line, so I'm going to give it a C. And tying the Seki to Dallas uh, will be a great swing tackle. That's exactly what you know they needed. They obviously have their tackles locked up with Tyron Smith and Lyle Collins, but for a, you know, a depth piece, I think that that is a really good value. So the offensive tackle, you know, your top one's off the board, uh, but maybe still some interesting talent out there. Mitchell Schwartz, for example, who was cut by the Chiefs. I'll be interested to see who gets him. So highest paid tackle. We'll see if Schwartz can get close, to be honest. But for right now, Trent Williams is your highest paid offensive tackle. Looking at guard and center together now, we have Joe Tooney signed a massive contract with the Chiefs. Um, interesting that they gutted, you know, their tackles. They cut both of them, but then they go out and get a guard. Um, one of the best guards. I don't think, though, he's worth, you know, the money possibly they gave him. Like, it's a little bit of an overpay. But you had to do what you had to do. So I think this is a very good signing. I give it a B plus. They need some protection. So they do that. Corey Lindsley. He, I believe, looking at it, is the highest paid center. And I think you can make the case that that is well-deserved. So I think that although, you know, you're paying somebody a lot of money, I'd give that one an A. They stole him from the Packers. The Packers, if you're looking back to me, probably... I like Aaron Jones a ton. I think that, um, I'm you know, normally you don't want to re-sign running backs, but he's one I would. Um, but perhaps they gave him a little much that then they couldn't keep Corey Lindsley, and I think that might come to bite them. So uh, I give that an A for the Chargers. Very good move. Kevin Zeitler... A plus. Perhaps the first, you know, one of the first free agents to come off the board. Um, unbelievable value right there for the Ravens. That is an A plus signing. To get one of the best guards in football for that value is unbelievable. So that one, A plus for just going out and getting him right out the gate. So that's unbelievable. Ted Karras uh, announced today will be going back to New England. He spent a lot of time in New England and then went to Miami, and now it's going back to New England, and this says that David Andrews will not be coming back, um, but if you're then saying Karras might be your starting center for $4 million, that's a great value, so I'm going to give it a B plus on that one. Elfline, I almost gave a D. The only reason it's not is that he actually might be starting for them. Their guard depth is not very good, but that is about it. You needed a starting guard. 
um, but this is a overpay by a mile. Almost gave it a lower grade. Do not like that signing at all. There's a reason he was cut from the Vikings and then, you know, wasn't retained by the Jets. So, um, very big overpay in my opinion here. Justin McCray, another one is just... Houston's trying to sign guys that can just be depth players. They haven't really signed anybody to be a starter. So he'll be a backup guard for them. I honestly looking at the roster, I uh, don't know if he makes the team. So I'm going to give that one a C. It's just the middle of the road. Justin McCray is decent depth. Uh, but this one is very interesting. I think the guard position, there was and center, some great signings. Those top three all will make a huge impact year one for their teams. Let's move to the defensive side of the ball now. Let's start with edge rushers. A lot of players getting signed and a lot of high grades you'll see here, but let me explain myself. I kind of am trying to balance out, you know, like there's a lot of signings here and some of them I like and some of them I don't, but a lot of them I think are decent value. The edge rusher is one of the most important positions in football right now behind quarterback. So I think you do need to pay up and get your guys. So Bud Dupree, big contract. I think it's worth it, though. He's being paid around the same as a Zadarius Smith, less than Shaquille Barrett. That seems about accurate to me. You know, he, he took a few years to develop, but then he did. Uh, it's clear then that Tennessee's not going to hold on to Jadavion Clowney. So I do think this was a good signing from uh, Tennessee. I'll give that one an A- minus to go opposite Harold Landry. Shaq Barrett almost gave an A. It is quite high of a pay, but... He's done it now for two seasons. One wasn't as good this year as he was the previous year, but uh, he's been pretty good for two seasons. You needed to keep him around if possible. They do that. So I'm going to give him and the Bucks an A- minus on that one. Leonard Floyd, I know he had a better year last year. You needed to lock him up, but I think it's a bit of an overpay. Um, I'll give it a C plus. It's not, you know, the money that some of these other guys got, but I don't love this one. But, you you know, otherwise you're not going to really have too much besides Aaron Donald. So you kind of had to do something, but I don't love it. Uh, so I'll give that one a C plus. Same with Trey Hendrickson. Um, this one is more so not Hendrickson himself. This is pretty good value for Hendrickson. But to me, the problem here is they missed out on Carl Lawson. And then they all of a sudden panicked and just went to Trey Hendrickson. I think that Lawson is better value. So, and it's the same, you know, it's the same contract. So why they couldn't literally give him a mil a year more for Lawson, uh, I don't know. Or, uh, or give him an extra year or something. I think that it would have been better if they kept Lawson. So that's why I give them this grade. But he's a good player, so I'll give it a C plus. Carl Lawson at 15 mil a year, as I just mentioned. Great job from the Jets here. I really like that signing for them. I'm going to give that one an A. Matthew Judon, not quite an A because the fit is very interesting to me. I don't think he's going to be unbelievable, but the value is there. They didn't really overpay. They got the deal done right away. Um, so I think that's a pretty good contract. So I'm going to give him an A minus. Same with Romeo Aquara. Performed very well last year. They got the deal done early in free agency. Um, you know, and they get good value. So I'm going to give that one an A minus to Yannick Ngakwe. You know, he's been on three different teams within the, now four within the last year. But I think that for 13 mil a year, that's a great signing from the Raiders. And they only gave him a two year deal. They didn't commit to him long term. I think that's a really good job from the Raiders. I give that one an A. Danico Autry. Almost, you know, may gave an A plus or it's barely an A still because I don't know about the fit. Um, but I do think it is unbelievable value for sure. So I think that is an A. He's a player that I think has really developed. So I like that signing for Tennessee. Tyus Bowser for Baltimore. They kind of had to do something once Judon left. Um, but he can be pretty good. And this is a decent value on the contract. So I give an A-. minus. I'm a huge Samson Ebukam fan. I think he's performed really well for 6 mil a year to get him in the rotation in San Francisco. Love that signing as well. To Cars McKinley, you know, he's bounced around a little bit this year. Um, I think that for 4.25 is a little much for otherwise I would have given it maybe a B. Um, a plus, he's, if they don't bring back Olivier Vernon, it's a decent value. Um, but I'll give it a C for now. It's just kind of there. And Derek Rivers um, has not really done much. So three mils a little much. And it's another example of Houston trying to become the New England Patriots with another mid 
you know, mid-value signing for a guy who hasn't done too much yet in his career. So, a lot of edge rushers off the board, but maybe some still to go, uh, but not going to get the money some of these top guys did. So, a lot of players getting paid at this position. Now talking about the defensive line, let's start with Dalvin Tomlinson going to Minnesota. I like this signing a lot. Didn't quite give it an A because they already paid Michael Pierce last year, but they're going to have a very good run defense now. I think it's a pretty good signing for Minnesota. Uh, they were able to make some cap space, but they need to take care of Daniel Hunter before they do anything else. Shelby Harris has played unbelievable the last two years. Good job, Denver, keeping him around. Very high pay, you know, nine mil a season, but that's what you have to do. He's played really well. Dietrich Wise is maybe a little bit of an overpay for me, um, but I think that is pretty good value to keep him in the rotation. So I'll give that one a B minus. Same with Roy Robertson Harris. I knew he was going to get paid this year. I don't love the fit, though, in Jacksonville. Um, I don't really know whether he's going to play edge rusher, you know, um, but they already have Josh Allen and Caleb on Chase on. And then if they play him at D-line, I think Tyson Aluwalu, as you see on the bottom, probably is a better chance of, um, you know, getting some playing time. So I think they overpaid for him. Very good player, though. So I'll give him a B-. minus. Then we have Henry Anderson signed from the Jets. I like that move for the Patriots for 3.5 mil a year. That's pretty good. So that's an A. Devin Gotcha, I like as well. I thought he was going to get paid, but a lot more than I expected. You know, over 7 mil a year. So I'll give that one a C+. Plus. Good player, maybe a little high overpay, but then Poana Ford for Seattle, great move, considering, you know, he got less than Davin Gacha, less than some of these other players. I think that's a really good move from Seattle, um, so I give that one an A, really good job. Malcolm Brown is a decent signing for the contract, but the problem is that they had to trade for him. I didn't really have space to put that on there, but they traded for him from the Saints, not just signed. So that brings it down a little bit. I don't think he's an unbelievable player still anymore, so I would give that one a C. It's just fine. They did it. Uh, I'm going to be honest really quick. I think the Jaguars had a whole ton of cap space, and they have not really done too much with it. There's a big signing we'll talk about in a bit, um, but... I think they've kind of just signed a bunch of middle-tier guys instead of going out and getting some of the top ones. Derek Wolf back to the Ravens. That's a pretty good deal as well. Four mil a year to keep him around. I give that one an A. Solid signing. Tyson Aluwalu was a very good pick. He started in Jacksonville and was not really playing well. And so he ended up going to Pittsburgh. And he plays really well for the Steelers. So I give this one an A+. Plus. Um, you know, I think I thought he was going to get a lot more. One of the best D linemen available, but he only gets 30 mil a year. I think that's unbelievable, so I give that an A+. Plus. Adam Butler, one of the more recent signings, I'll give that an A. Um, he has a chance to start in Miami. Um, I, I think he fits the system, so that's why I have it so high of a grade, and it's not too bad a pay uh, for a guy who's gotten some playing time in New England, so that's a pretty good signing. Jihad Ward, I've never been a fan of, so it's just there. Once again, an example of why Jacksonville, are you signing three of these guys? Like, four, actually. Like, look how many are on the screen. Like, Jihad Ward, you just did not need, so it's just a C. Malik Collins was a little bit of an overpay to me um, for Houston, actually. Uh, I just don't think that that was a great move he might not even start Vincent Taylor another example just a middle of the road guy that they're gonna pick up you know to play one year in the system it's like you know he played for Miami which connects to the Patriots because you know Flores is there is they're just doing the same thing over and over and I don't like it from the Texan side so don't love those the Texans but overall the D lineman market is going, but there's still some top names available. I'd say Jarrell Casey and Kwan Short are two players to keep an eye on. So, some movement on the defensive line. Linebacker has kind of been the opposite, to be honest. Um, there's not that many names yet. Jared Davis, I like as a player still. When the original $7 million came out, I thought that was a little bit of an overpay for one year. But for 5.5 mil, I like this signing a lot. I'll give it a B+. Plus. Kevin Pierre-Lewis, though, to me, was an overpay, and the only reason it is a C is he might actually start for them, but this is another example of Houston, why are you going middle of the road instead of actually going out and signing somebody? So I give that one a C. Nicholas Morrow, 
actually got some playing time last year. I think he is a pretty good signing there at one year, 4.5. So I'll give that one a B. Kamu Gruje Hill, I've not been a fan of. I didn't like the signing from Miami. Um, and once again, I don't like it this year. It's just a middle of the road guy. He might not start for the team. It's just there. Um, once again, I don't know what the Houston Texans are doing. Nick Vigil, to me, is an A for only 1.75 uh, mil. Is he great? No, but for that cheap of a contract, good job by the Vikings getting some depth. And Joe Thomas, another example. Texans, what are you doing? You're just grabbing a bunch of guys and trying to put it together and make a puzzle when that just doesn't work. Um, I have no idea what they're doing because if they really thought Deshaun was going to be there, they'd go out and sign some players to give them some support, but they're just kind of going in between. Like, the, it looks like they're tanking almost, you know? Like, I don't know what they're doing, so I don't love that one. Not a lot of movement yet from the linebacker position, so keep an eye out on that one in the days to come. Cornerbacks, on the other hand, we have a lot of movement, so let's get right into it. William Jackson, the best corner. Um, off the board, three years, 40 and a half. It's a high contract, but I like this move from the Washington football team. Just go out there, get a really good corner. So that is an A move. It's a big contract, but really good. Shaquille Griffin, around the same value. To me, they're not even close. I think that William Jackson is a ton better than Shaquille Griffin, and Shaquille Griffin is a borderline uh first corner and they're painting like you know he's going to be their pure number one opposite um cj henderson and i think that's a bit of an overpay but he is a pretty good player so i'll give it a b ronald darby i thought still you know could get a decent contract but 10 mil a year is an overpay um so i'm gonna give that one a c for denver mike hilton though unbelievable signing for only six mil a year uh, I know you lost William Jackson, but let's just, you know, say this. The the Trey Waynes and Mackenzie Alexander signings didn't work out well for Cincinnati. So you go out and get Mike Hilton, one of my favorite free agency signings so far. Michael Davis, to me, was a bit of an overpay. I know he played pretty well last year, but you chose to keep Casey Hayward over Michael Davis, and I personally disagree with that. So I think it's an overpay. I'll give it a C-. minus. Then we have a C for Chidobe Awuzie, uh, a little bit of an overpay, um, but he's played pretty well. He can play outside if they have Hilton in the slot. You know, he can be one of the outside players. So I think that that's a decent signing for Cincinnati. Jason Verrett, though, is an A++. I didn't think I could do that, but I did because it's a one-year, five-mil contract for one of the best comeback stories the last year. He's been hurt for the past few years, played unbelievable. I thought he would get a pretty big contract, but he's given us a five-mil deal, so I, I, a lot of credit to the 49ers for keeping him because they lost to Kello Witherspoon, as you see the next one. That's an A-plus as well for only four-mil a year. Had him as a top 100 free agent. Really good job from Seattle going out there, getting a division rivals player. So the Cameron Sutton as well, I gave another good rating to. He's a top 100 player, and they had to do this kind of in response to, um, you know, Mike Hilton leaving. Uh, so Cam Sutton can be their slot corner. So I like that signing. Terrence Mitchell, once again, Houston. It's a middle of the road player. You know, like, it's just there. He'll start for you. He's pretty good, but... I don't know what they're doing, so I'll give them a B. It's just a little bit of an overpay to me. Justin Coleman for only 2.75 mil. I think he still has some decent playing ability. Even though he just was cut, he can play your slot corner position. That's an A to me from Miami. Justin Hardy, though, to me I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, I don't think he's anything special, so I... You know, I guess they kept... I think he was on the Jets, possibly, at one point. Then he went to the Saints, and now he's back. Um, so, I'll give him a C-. minus. It's just not... It's below average to me. A little bit of an overpay there. And Traymond Smith is just there. Another example of Houston. Just, they're locking up these guys for, you know, 1 million, 2 million. And it's just not going to work to me. So, I'll give that one a C. It's just in the middle of the road. to so some movement, but, for example, Richard Sherman... Still out there. J.C. Jackson just was given a second round tender. I could see a team willing to give up a second round pick for him. So still some movement to be had at the cornerback position. Safety, one of the best signings of free agency so far. John Johnson to the Rams. That's an A plus for that amount of money. Great job getting, you know, I think for me, he was a top seven or so free agent. Unbelievable value. 
A+. Jalen Mills is a B plus for the for the signing itself. I really like the value there. Only six mil a year. Really like that. But how he fits in, I don't know for sure. Um, so I think that I'd give that one a B plus. They'll turn him into something special though. So that was a good signing right there from the Patriots. Ray Sean Jenkins to me, an overpay. Almost lowered this one. I guess they're getting a safety for the next few years, but a little bit of an overpay, so I give that one a B. Not as big of a fan of Rayshon Jenkins as some other people. Rudy Ford, on the other hand, I'm not a huge Rudy Ford fan, to be honest, but a possible starting safety uh, for, you know, a little over two mil a year is a pretty good value, so I'll give that one an A. And then another example, guy who literally played in New England, one-year deal for Texans, just... Again, they're on every slide with a dude that's worth less than two million. So, not a great signing there. But the John Johnson signing was one of the best so far in free agency. So, a whole ton of credit to the Browns for doing that. So that was grading free agency signings over the past few days. I'll try to make more of these as the news continues to break. Um, I'll look to make some draft content as well coming up. You know, it's an exciting time in the NFL right now. It's pure off season so i will be making more videos the news might slow down so i might wait a few days you know just let the news kind of pile in um you know and make so don't worry if a signing happens during this video's uploading or maybe after i'll include it in a future one so also draft content you know i'll try to get out a lot of that as it's prime time right now for the off season in the nfl super exciting for football fans so thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next one